Let us unite our hearts in a prayer. Emmanuel, God is with us. Emmanuel, Jesus Christ, you're always with us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, O oh God. We are coming in the first Sunday of Advent. It is the time for us to prepare ourselves, to be ready, to wait, to do some anticipation of your coming, O oh Lord Jesus Christ. Father, thank you. Thank you so much for whatever blessings that we can get. And in this time, O oh God, with ourselves, this is our offering to you, Father. In this time of our Sunday service, we come, we worship, we praise your name. To God be the glory. And this is Lord Jesus, the motives that we, each one of us, all of us, are doing right now only for your glory. Help us, Father, to have a humble heart, to listen to your words. So every single word that comes to our hearing, it will be a good seed, it will be fruitful in our heart, in our mind and also in our daily life. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Emmanuel. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Please be seated, brother and sister in Jesus Christ. Our sermon today, as a scripture text that we're going to read, is taken from Mark chapter 13, verse 24 until 37. Mark chapter 13, 24 until 37. Let me read this for you and let us look at and let us be focused, be humble to listen to the words of God. But in those days, following that distress, the sun will be dark and the moon will not give its light. The star will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in cloud with great power and glory, and he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Now, learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that the summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that it is near, right at the door. Truly, I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard. Be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and put his servants in charge, each with their assigned tax, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, Keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch, 
This is the word of God written for the people of God. Brother and sister in Jesus Christ, today is the first Sunday of Advent. Advent means it's a time to wait. Anticipation time or waiting time to wait for Jesus coming. First Advent, we light the first candle of Advent in our altar. And first Advent also called as a hope. There is a hope in our waiting for Jesus Christ. For today, we say our waiting for his second coming. Our waiting for Jesus' second coming. Many people predict about the end times, is it? I think some of you knew about this news. But unfortunately, all the prediction were failed. For example, people thought the helicomets yeah, would crash into earth in 1910. So people predict by this time, the word, the earth will be finished. But after this, various conspiracy theories, religious leaders have incorrectly predict as well the date of the rapture. Some of them try to predict when is the rapture come. I don't know how many of you ever watched the movie about rapture. Seems like when they are walking, when they drive, and even when they're home, the wife's gone and only the clothes. Have you ever watched that movie? It's talking about rapture. And when they are uh, driving a car, suddenly the sun's gone, only the clothes. So this is how the people try to understand, try to get understand what is the meaning of the rapture. Or maybe people thought, maybe you knew about this also, 2020, uh, sorry, to, yes. People thought the world will end when the Mayan calendar ended. When is the Mayan calendar ended? It is in December 21st, and it is predicted before 2012. But when the exact time happened, nothing happened. So people ever predict about this end of the word 2012. So brothers, sisters, so far, no theories or prediction about how the word will end have proven true, even until now. So let us go back to our scripture today. Jesus said in Mark 13, 24 to 25, it is just the same in what Revelation chapter 6, verse 12 and 13. It's just the same. Meaning to say, when Jesus talked about this, Jesus spoke to John, who wrote the Revelation book. Mark 13, verse 24, same with Revelation chapter 6, verse 12. I watched as he opened the sixth seal, there was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth made of goat hair. The whole moon turned blood red. And Mark 13, verse 25, same with Revelation chapter 6, verse 13. It is said, And the stars in the sky fell to earth as figs drop from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. And by this sign, by the time, by this happen, moment will come to us. People will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And God will send His angels and gather His elect from the four winds. What does it mean? From all the earth, from the ends of earth, to the ends of heaven. That is why in verse 29 he said, Jesus said, Even so, when you see this happening, what does it mean? Jesus said, You know that the time is near. Right at the door. Brothers and sisters, 
Jesus did not mention about the time. But Jesus mentioned about the signs. So if we know the signs, we have to know that the time is near. That is what our Bible and Jesus mentioned to the disciples and his people at the time. Because nobody knows when is the time. But when you see the signs, we have to be known that he is near. In verse 32, he said, But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. So I just want to say, let us stop to predict the time. Is it? But let us now learn and help ourselves to know and to get the right understanding about the signs. So what are the signs, brothers and sisters? Maybe some of you know it already. It is mentioned and so much talking in the book of Revelation as well. So let us look at the book of Revelation that conclude also some of the prophecy of proverb that sent by God in the Old Testament. So if we read the book of Revelation, actually this is not new words. If you look at your Bible, yeah, I don't know in the gadget, yeah, but if you look at your Bible, at the bottom part, there's some verses that ask you to see and compare. So if you read Revelation, brothers and sisters, there are so many words in the book of Revelation. Actually, it is taken from Daniel, Isaiah, and some of the symbol had been prophesied before by all the prophets in the Old Testament. So we need to get the whole book of Revelation. We need to read the whole chapter. But this time, let us learn together. I will not explain the whole things about Revelation today, but we have a video under five minutes, I think about five minutes, by Ellen Parr. Ellen Parr is the Beat Foundation. He is a teacher, speaker, preacher, trainer. He put the foundation name is Beat Biblical Encouragement and Truth. And if you have time with you and your family, you also can see so many teachings, trainings, and speaking about all things that question in the Bible that this brother, this speaker, help us to know. Because they have focus to let the truth be known by all the believers. So like last Sunday sermon, Jesus said, not only believe, but we need to hold on to the teaching. By holding on to the teaching, we have to know which one is the right teaching. So, I hope all of us can see this video. Okay, I invite Johannes, please turn on. Let us look at the whole book of Revelation. What is the book of Revelation all about? Stick around and find out today on the beat. Wait, uh, Johannes, first. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name. What is the Book of Revelation all about? Stick around and find out today on the beat. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Alan Parr. Thank you all so much for visiting my channel. Today, we are talking about the book of Revelation, a book that has many, many different interpretations, a book that many Christians avoid reading, and some are actually afraid of reading it. But today, I want to take you through a sevenfold chronological journey 
through the book of Revelation. And the first thing we need to look at is the background. The name of the book comes from the very first verse, which says the revelation of Jesus Christ, which lets us know that this book is about the unveiling or the uncovering of the person, the plan, and the power of one man named Jesus Christ. It was written in 95 AD by a man named the Apostle John, who also wrote the Gospel of John and the first, second, and third letters of John. Second of all, we have Revelation chapters 2 and 3, where Jesus writes seven letters to seven churches that were located in Asia Minor. And each one of these letters consists of or exposes or deals with a particular sin that was going on in the churches at that time. But it applies to all churches throughout all history. And these two chapters represent the current church age in which we are living in today. Next, we have what's called the Tribulation, and this covers the bulk of the book of Revelation, chapters 6 through 19. And this refers to a seven-year period whereby which the church has been now raptured and taken away from the earth to be with God in heaven, and those who have been left behind have been graciously given another opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. But the catch is that it will be very difficult to be a Christian during these seven years because the church and all spiritual influence has been removed, leaving nothing but wickedness, wrath, and chaos behind. Now, the last three and a half years of this seven-year period is what scholars are calling the Great Tribulation, and things are going to get real bad. It's going to have sun scorching people's skin. It's going to have water that you can't drink, uh, sores on people's skin, and it is going to be increasingly more difficult to say that you are a Christian during this last three and a half years of the Tribulation. And so after the seven years of tribulation are ended, the Bible says that the next event will be what's called the Battle of Armageddon. And I hesitate to call it a battle because Jesus and all of his armies, which includes you and I, we are going to totally and completely destroy Satan and his armies. And the Bible says that after this battle, that Satan will be bound for a thousand years. Next, we have what is called the Millennial Kingdom. And this is the actual second coming of Jesus Christ. And it will be a 1,000 year period where by Jesus sets up a literal kingdom here on earth and every Christian who has ever believed in Jesus Christ throughout all time will also rule and reign with Jesus Christ on earth and it will be a time that will be characterized by righteousness peace and joy and holiness because Satan and all of his demonic influence will be bound and so six, we have the judgments. And so after the 1,000 years have ended, Satan and his whole demonic crew will be cast into the lake of fire. And then every single non-believer throughout the history of time will stand before God in what is called the great white throne judgment. And they will give an account for their sins. And then they will also be cast into the lake of fire to spend eternity apart from God. And number seven is the good news, and that's the fact that God will create a new heaven and a new earth. Interestingly enough, there are only four chapters in the entire Bible where there is a perfect environment, Genesis chapters 1 and 2 and Revelation chapters 21 and 22. And so what we see here is that God's perfect, amazing story coming full circle whereby God reestablishes the perfect environment that he had intended at creation. And the reason for this is because the earth in which we currently live in is not fit for eternity because it's decaying every day. So God is going to do away with this earth. He's He's going to burn it with fire and he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth where we can dwell with him throughout all eternity. And so I hope this short video will whet your appetite and encourage you to study the book of Revelation and see the awesome plan that God has for the future. And most importantly, that this book will give us as Christians comfort in knowing that no matter how crazy things get on earth, that God okay. was, is, and always will be in complete control of human okay, history. Thank you. If you found this video helpful... Is the video is too fast. Yeah, because he needs to conclude 21st chapter in one, in five minutes, yeah? But I think you still again and again watch it. So, brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, there is a hope when we know about Revelation. Revelation actually is talking about Jesus. And Jesus came to this earth. Jesus will bring the victory. But we need to know the sign. We need to understand. So you and me, all of us, 
we will know what we're gonna doing. So this video also mentioned to us, our book Revelation also mentioned to us, there are the great tribulation as part also as the sign. So as we know, suffering, pain, war, is it? It's happened around us. So let us be aware of all these things. Now, in our hoping for Christ's return, what should we do as his people? It is taken in verse 30 until 37 that Jesus mentioned to all of us. Be on guard. Be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It is like a man going away. So Jesus gave an illustration. He leaves his house and put his servants in charge, each with their assigned tax, and tells that the one at the door to keep watch. Verse 35, Therefore, keep watch because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. So what should we do as his people, as someone who believes in Christ, when we are waiting for his coming, his second coming, to bring us back? Let us be on guard. Let us be alert. Let us keep watch, keep awake. This is what Jesus mentioned to his disciple at the time, to the people, and also to everyone, to all of us. Whom we say, I believe in you, God. I believe in you, Jesus. And Jesus mentioned, that's why be alert. Keep awake. Watch yourself. What does it mean? Meaning to say, we need to be ready, brothers and sisters. Like Jesus gave the illustration of a man going away and he put sums of tax to some of the servants and asks, please put one, keep watching at the door because they do not know when the master will come back. Same like us. Jesus mentioned, be alert, be on guard, be ready because we do not know the time. But he gave a sign that it is near, almost, almost. Sometimes the question of some people asking, when is the time? Everyone say it's near, everyone say almost, everyone say it's near. But year by year, not coming yet. And then I said to the person, do you want him to coming soon to your life? I said, oh no, 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 no. I'm not ready yet. So sometimes we also try to challenge, yeah? Try to challenge God. When is it the time? So the question, when you know the times, what you should do? Be ready. Meaning to say, let us be serious in our faith. Because we do not know when he comes to us. Can be evening, can be midnight or morning. But today's scripture encourage us. Let us live our life as Jesus wants from us to be his real believer. To be real follower. To be real disciple every day. This is the sign that we are ready for him when he came, when he come to this earth, trying our best every day to hold on to his teaching, remain in him, remain in his word, living in him, connect with him always. So we will not worry whenever Jesus Christ come to our life, anytime, anywhere, we are ready for that. Because we know every day of our life, always connect with Him. But 
if you are still afraid and worry and even we are afraid to die let us check our relationship with God maybe there is something wrong in our relationship with God why we are worried and afraid if our relationship with God is okay I do believe we will never worry about our life even in the end times because God is the one who hold us who hold our lives he is our creature he formed us in the beginning before maybe our mother having pregnant of us in her womb he knew us from beginning until the end of our life so why need to be worried the key is how is our relationship with God if we are still worried let us check ourselves how is my connection with God every day because when God say keep awake be alert be on guard watch ourselves God asks us to be ready anytime anywhere so every day we will be wise and always ready in God brothers and sisters there is one time my mom invite her sister-in-law to join her to go to Jakarta <clears throat> so my mom asked her let's join me to Jakarta let us visit my <clears throat> my daughter's family so my I call auntie yeah so my auntie said like this oh no sister I won't go to Jakarta why because I was afraid of the shaking of the plane I was afraid when the plane will shake and I will be died so my mom said you know if you want to die no need to be on the plane even you just sitting down or you're sleeping if God wants to call you die you die so it is not because of the aeroplane and then I said uh, to my mom are you sure are you saying like that then my mom said yes I'm saying like that so why I need to be worried if at the time God call me even it is in the plane in the boat or when I'm walking when I sit down I have to be ready right all of us will go there is it then I said to myself oh meaning that my mom grown in his faith brothers and sisters John 3 16 said if we believe in him we will not perish but we will have eternal life each one of us even the book of Revelation mentioned that the glory of God will be with us at the end each one of us for those who believes in him shall not perish there is guarantee the assurance of salvation that only Jesus Christ gave to each one of us and can say this promise you and me with me in the paradise this is what Jesus said to the criminal person in the in his left side and Jesus was on the cross Jesus is God he knows us so let us be ready we will be wise and always ready in God sometimes we are worried how about my family how about my son how about my husband how about my wife how about my parents don't you know that God is no more about you yourself rather than you yourself so let us be ready my dear brothers and sisters in this time what happened let us keep awake look at again ourselves check our relationship with him am I awake God am I alert God am I the person who will keep watch of my walk daily Am I the person 
who are ready as well like what the Bible say whenever he comes home the master comes home and all the servants are ready let us check ourselves may this first Sunday of Advent remind us to be alert remind us to be watchful of our Christian's life remind us to be on guard of our faith keep awake for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ let us pray dear God thank you so much for the words thank you for reminding us God to be alert to be on guard to keep awake Help us, Father, to always have relationship with you every day, to always connect with you. No matter the end times come, that the signs come to our lives, help us to understand that your coming is near. Help us, Lord, if we, you give us chance to live meaning that you give us opportunity to be able to change our life better day by day help us lord to be alert for everything that you have been done in us help us lord to always be on guard that ourselves will be ready Whenever Jesus came to this earth for the second coming, we know God. Where is our place? We know God. The assurance of salvation that you've given to us at the beginning, we put our trust and our belief in you. Help us, O oh God, to be a true followers of Jesus, to be a real disciples, to hold on to your teaching, so when we say that we are disciple yes lord we are someone who are ready and who are always have connection with you thank you father for reminding us of this word in jesus name we pray amen